Hey everybody, it's time for another upgrade project. And first of all, these videos can usually span a few days. So the facial hair may change, the clothing may change. So just a heads up. So this time around, let me show you our victim. This is the newer real M18S. This is a 310 by 310 by 400. 3D printer it is basically, to say as nicely as possible, a just a cheap generic clone that came from overseas that came with cheap parts and the hot end on this thing, um, all it does is jam. Now, if this thing looks vaguely familiar to you, uh, let me show you what it looks like on the Amazon page here. Let me go to the second monitor. And uh, so this is what it looked like uh, when it sold brand new. It's been, hasn't been available for about three years now. Uh, if it looks familiar, this is the Focus Odin, and this came out two years ago, and the Focus uh, is basically identical. I mean, it's just remarkable to me. When, when this showed up at my doorstep for review time, um, I was like, oh my goodness, this is the small scale version of the newer reel that I have. Um, there were a lot of people that had this printer. There were some firmwares that were available for it. I wrote to some friends of mine and said, hey, let's take the firmware for this thing and modernize it, You know, get the BL Touch on there and do that on the newer reel. And that's what I did. And let me go back to the uh, proper camera here. So you can see on this side here, the BL Touch is on there. And this also has the ribbon cable. So, uh, you know, I'm not really sold on the ribbon cable thing. They're just not designed for this kind of purpose, you know, moving back and forth. So far, no issues. But uh, again, the biggest issue with this machine has just been that it just, the, the extruder is just junk. It jams constantly. The issue with this thing, um, Inside this extruder is a tensioner and there's no way to adjust that tensioner. Uh, so what you have is what you have. So if you have trouble feeding material, uh, getting it in or getting it out, it's notorious for curling up inside. Uh, it's just not a whole lot of fun. It does have its own little uh, clone. Uh, this is a clone it looks like of the volcano. Uh, the nozzle on the thing, uh, it's, it's roughly a volcano nozzle. It uses a very specific size PTFE tube or uh, you know, Teflon uh, tube. If you get it too short, you'll have filament leaking all over it. If you get it too tall, it just won't feed at all. So not a good time at all. So it's, it's time to get something better in there. So in my notes here, I went through searching for, as you know, I love the Bontech slice engineering combinations. Bontech makes some great upgrade kits for a variety of printers. And one of them is artillery and the artillery sidewinder X1 has a very similar, let me just show you here, the, uh, the gantry side, this is 2020, okay, by 40 here. And I was trying to find, basically my, my thought was if I can find something that has the same size carriage, and this is the one that came off the Fucus Odin, um, this is not identical, I don't think, to what the, what's on the M18. Um, I'll, I'll have to, we'll have to find out when we take this apart. But what I did is I was hoping just to find, <laughs> this sounds lazy. I wanted to find an upgrade path where I could just bolt on, you know, a new extruder that I knew would be reliable and that would already have the part cooling pan solution. Now in this case, the artillery sidewinder has a built-in BL touch like sensor. So I'm gonna have to kind of create my own mount for BL touch, which I think I found with these guys. We'll get to that in detail. So, what I found on the Bontech website here, and I will share that with you, is this is the LGX Mosquito, and this is the upgrade kit that goes for um, the Sidewinder kit. And what this gives us, if I can get this in a big picture here, so that's going to be the finished product. Now, how ours is going to wire up. So this is using the existing, there's a PCB, okay, on the uh, hot end um, that is reused with the artillery sidewinder. Now, for my purposes with the newer reel, I don't think I'm going to do that. I think what I already have on the machine so far, you can see I already have a wire running from here and to the back for the BL touch. So in going with the LGX option, and I have a beautiful bunch of parts down here, uh, I have plenty of cable here. This is the 50 watt cartridge. Uh, I have the, uh, the better therm resistor and I have all the parts and pieces here. I've got the, uh, this is the mosquito. Of course, if the focus wants to work, we'll see. And we got the LGX in the box. 
And I let Bontech know about this and they offered these parts for a great discount. So it made this whole video <laughs> on the affordability factor way better. So getting back to what's going on here, this thing has those ribbon cables. And as much as I want to leave as much of this alone as I can, um, I'm putting a 50 watt heater on here. So rather than risking any damage to this ribbon cable, I think what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna run that wire direct to the, the uh, Robin Nano that's inside the control board. Uh, and then I think I'm gonna do the same thing because I have plenty and plenty of, of, of wire here. So those two using this existing braid here, uh, I'm gonna run those uh, back down and directly con uh, connect those into the control board. So now, <laughs> the next part of this is, and let me go back to my other camera here. So this is the carriage uh, that, that is, well, this was the one that I, I took off the Odin. And I suspect the one that's on the newer reel is very similar. There's a couple things that are different here. First of all, I had to source an artillery sidewinder X1, X axis, you know, gantry. So I have this. So I've already gone ahead and lined these two up and I've determined that <laughs> I've got to drill a hole right about here. And you can probably see that a little different there because this guy is significantly taller. So this may have to be trimmed. So we may have to shorten that. The other thing is, is that where the belts are being fed. So I hate messing with belts, but I did notice that the way that the belts are attached on the Fucus Odin is different on this machine. Uh, basically it's held in place with zip ties. So my thought is hopefully reusing the existing belts, I'll be able to fit them through here and then twist tie them and, and hold them in place. So, and if you're wondering how this all goes together, uh, this piece will, will go on top over here. And oh, I just clicked on something with my mouse here, there we go. So, so this is gonna line up here and this is gonna be where our motor and our extruder and, and all that goodness goes here. And that's where these holes all, all eventually line up. So it's a, uh, <laughs> to say the least, it's a very ambitious pr project. Um, <laughs> you know, we're not sure, you know, if that mount's gonna work. We're not sure about how the electronics are gonna go. So, you know, let's just set <laughs> our expectations here. So the goal, get this thing to print reliably with a excellent hot end because the print volume on this thing is ideal for a lot of the prints that I do. So the control board is okay. We don't have to replace that. The Robin Nano is fine. The firmware, there's a couple changes I'll have to make. I may reach out to my friend Keith B for some suggestions, but I do know that once we do get this on oh, the last part of this as well too, I apologize. Uh, I found this on Thingiverse and this is a mount that will uh, attached, the BL Touch will be sitting down here. And I believe after this structure is all together, we should have two screw openings where we can slide this. I believe this attaches to the back of what will be the stepper motor. Um, and maybe that will work, we shall see. A again, everything about this is maybe this will work. So again, this is one of those projects where am I making it harder for myself? Should I just junk this thing? But no, I, I just wanna see if we can take this junky old printer and turn it into something reliable that is able to do some excellent prints. So that's a long preface. Are you ready? Here we go. Okay, sorry, back again. That was a long opener. And I just want to start out with, first of all, welcome. Welcome to our Nerdy is Cool. My name is Paul, and this is my YouTube channel. All about 3D printing, upgrades. I'm into all kinds of cool projects, built an R2D2, a Batman suit. You get it, I'm a nerdy guy. Uh, if you've never seen my stuff before and would like to see the things I've done, hit the subscribe button down below, check out my videos. And, well, here we go. We're gonna start on the newer reel. And I think the first thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take the bottom off of this thing here and show you what the control board looks like before I start dismantling too far. So prepare for a lot of stops and starts. 
Okay, it's editing voice, Paul, and <laughs> because so many things in this project went sideways. So this is the uh, Robin Nano version 1.2 board, and uh, what I'm pointing out is where everything is plugged in. And as you can see, there's a hearty amount of uh, adhesive here, uh, what they use to uh, make sure nothing pops out. Uh, so on that side is where the hot end uh, plugs in, and then uh, down below the heated bed and uh, the uh, actual inputs for the board itself. Uh, over here, I'm showing where the uh, hot end uh, thermosistor wire is. I'm not crazy about making connectors, so uh, kind of what I'm demonstrating here is maybe I can save this wire. So you'll hear more voice over Paul here as we go, because so many things changed in part of this build. As a matter of fact, this board got replaced. Okay, let me talk you through this. So taking apart the hot end, so the BL Touch mount's coming off, that ribbon cable is coming off, and uh, one of the first things I'm gonna notice as I'm looking at all this is uh, that BL Touch mount I thought was gonna work so great. Well, there was no screw hole uh, for me to mount that on there. And look at how fast I'm working here. Best thing in the world is one of those label makers. So I'm labeling all, labeling all the wires just in case I'm gonna need them again. Um, you know, better safe than sorry. Uh, again, more of the hot end stuff coming apart. I put all this stuff in a box. I don't know if I'll ever use them again. Fans, of course, I can reuse, but uh, you know, we'll hang on them anyway. And that PCB right there, that thing was more problem than it was worth. I, uh, we'll get onto that later here, but uh, uh, yeah, not a fun piece of hardware. We're getting the rest of the extruder off of here. And uh, what gets interesting here, and I'm gonna slow this down here at the hot end so you can see what the crux of the problem was with this particular machine. Okay, we're back to regular speed here. We're taking the heat sink off this thing. Okay, look at that giant spring on this thing and there's absolutely no tensioner on this thing whatsoever. Um, so for those of you that have hot ends that are just like this, I know there's a lot of folks that have the Fuchs Odin and such. Uh, th this is the problem right here. Uh, I mean, and that's a pretty hardy spring, as you can see. I'm really pinching hard to get that thing to, to move. Uh, I even put a screw in there thinking I could at least alleviate the tension a little bit, but no, no, not at all. Uh, so that's uh, basically, you know, you got a decent printer with a decent print quality, and you have the cheapest extruder and hot end in the planet. <laughs> <laughs> with iffy quality. Uh, and again, you're only pulling from one side. You have the idler on the left, you have the hob gear on the side, and that hob gear, for whatever reason, PLA will put a groove in it. So again, just low quality stuff. Uh, the hot end uh, is, just, is coming out here in pieces. Uh, again, as I mentioned in the opener in the video, it's basically a knockoff of a Volcano V6 hot end, but this thing is really weird because it uses the PTFE tube, Teflon tube, whatever you want to call it. Um, if it's not exactly the right size, uh, it, it will not fit properly. It will not make a perfect seal, so you'll wind up with a nice blob. Um, so here we go. We're just uh, This is the last step in getting the hot end all apart, and uh, I, I won't overtalk this here, but essentially uh, that will leave us with our bare x-axis uh, gantry, and uh, we'll be able to move on from there. Okay, the fun part, here we go. Just taking the uh, X-axis gantry off and uh, you know, pretty easy peasy here. You're just unbolting everything. And uh, as you can see on the bottom here, they've uh, they've definitely doubled up on the uh, uh, twist ties here, or I'm sorry, the zip ties. There we go, to uh, secure that in place. And uh, after a little bit of uh, snipping and such, uh, free one side. And uh, good news is the belt comes right off, no problem. And uh, on the other side here, I'm working off all those zip ties. And the good news is, voila, so we have the, the belts are off. And uh, at the, the big thing I'm noticing here is I have at least some extra belt to work with to uh, mount in the future X-axis gantry. Okay, several days have passed. Haircut, different clothes. Um, so I made a boo-boo. <laughs> I had to order another part. So let me show you what I have now. Uh, so this, you may recall from last time, except uh, this is a new one. I, I, uh, the other one, I inadvertently uh, cut the hole a little too far, uh, did the trigonometry wrong, uh, so that when I did attach these wheels, uh, it was not attaching to the 2040 rail at all. Uh, no matter how much I turned that eccentric nut, I was off by a good three millimeters. So, 
um, consulted with uh, my friend Jack and ordered another one and we double checked. <laughs> uh, we did all the uh, uh, math on this, or rather he did, so I'll kudos to Jack, thank you. Uh, and then um, cut the bottom off. So with any luck, able to get, this will go on next. And uh, yeah, we can move on to the next steps here of trying to figure out how we're gonna make this work with the LGX setup. Okay, editing Paul voice again. So this video, I'm trying to keep it shorter uh, because there's a lot of details in this build and people love the details, but I'm also trying to avoid the video being <laughs> obtusely long. So what I'm detailing here, and this is one of the beautiful things about Bontech. Uh, Bontech offers not only a complete solution, uh, but very detailed instructions. And if I had an artillery sidewinder X1 or X2, this would have worked perfect. And for the most part, this worked fine for what I was trying to do. But of course, I'm using a different gantry. I have a different motherboard. I have different electronics, the whole bit. So what I want to point out here, and I want to definitely give kudos to Bontech, is that the, the instructions here are completely step-by-step -step and are fantastic. And for the most part, that all worked perfectly for me. I had a few catches along the way, but again, I'm trying to make an upgrade for another machine work for this machine. This was one of those moments where just when you think you have the world in your fingertips, you realize that this is not gonna work. So as I'm putting the belts here, uh, I'm quickly discovering that, hey, uh, look at how those belts look uh, up against the uh, actual wheels here. And there's no way that uh, this thing, even if I zip tie it and if I try messing with the ends, there's no way that that gantry is gonna make it all the way to one side and the other. It just, I mean, look at the way the belts are being deflected. So we had to get creative once again. All right, here we go again. And uh, this time I'm discovering that if I bend those tabs the other way, and I did it with the spare piece I had, this, you know, the belts will work and they will reach. However, aluminum is not very forgiving with when you bend it a lot. So I'm concerned that now that I've bent these things, you can see some exposed material there. Uh, you know, is there with the other piece, is there a better way to, to bend this without doing that damage or... So yeah, that's where I was kind of stuck for a day or two, chatting with some people at work who are way smarter than I am about uh, metals and materials, wondering, okay, I, I think I have a solution, but how do I fix this? Okay, a little bit of an update here. So a couple of things to show. So this is how things are currently installed at the moment. Let me back it up. And let me give some explanation with the other camera here. So I wound up um, having to bend this piece backwards. Uh, this is my spare piece here, so I tested on this one first. Uh, and so, as you can tell, this has the bottom piece. This one has it cut off. And what I noticed with aluminum is you can bend aluminum maybe once or twice. <laughs> so I reinforced this with some JB Weld and let that cure for two days, just to be sure. This is my spare piece. I gave it a couple of good tugs and I feel like it's gonna be okay. Um, I, the smarter way of doing this would have been to, you know, get the CAD file for it or dimension it and CNC it out of steel, but time is of the essence, right? Uh, so anyway, what this does is now, you know, the belts are coming down, but I mean, this thing is able to do its full travel now, uh, whereas before, uh, because these were forward initially, it was pulling the belt way out and it would not make it here or here. So um, in comparison to where the belt was being grasped before, um, if I just kind of put this over here next to it, it's, it's pretty much the same spot. Um, so maybe that will work. Editing Paul again. So one of the things I covered it repeatedly in this video, and I just want to give a summary here, I really wanted to keep that ribbon cable in there. There are a lot of ribbon cables out there. Some were used in dot matrix printers and laser printers and what have you. So certainly they're, they have their use. And I was concerned about their use in 3D printing. What I wanted to do is I'm showing you that control board is it would be really cool if I could keep that ribbon cable and everything just plugs into where it used to plug in. But as I'm getting further into the LGS uh, installation and wondering how things are going to attach to that, I'm starting to realize that I'm going to have to get creative again on this. So this is kind of a segue just saying that ribbon cable is going to go away. Direct wiring everything. It will require a little bit more work, but 
this ribbon cable and especially that PCB controller has some really weird things going on and you'll notice in the future clips that I've just decided to make it go away. Oh my god, this was so confusing. Okay, so everything is attached to the artillery side window hardware, but my upgrade kit that came from Bontech, I'm noticing that, hey, they sent me a 50-15 fan and then this bracket piece here, and how is this supposed to fit on here? Because on the website, they're showing step-by-step -step how to use the existing hardware to attach this upgrade kit. Well, they changed the upgrade kit. Unfortunately, they did it for the better, but my brain is stuck on, wait a minute, what you sent me, there is no BL touch mount, and I need a BL touch mount. So I'm looking at the set of instructions that largely looks like it's gonna work. And you can see right now I've been struggling with, you know, getting the fan. I don't have a fan duct. So why would they send me a kit without a fan duct? So yeah, so right now I'm kind of, you know, stuck in a brain loop. I'm thinking, well, at least I have a BL touch mount. So yeah, when you modify an upgrade, it's fun. Pay close attention to the bottom nut because remember, I've modified this mounting bracket, this gantry, to accommodate this printer and I had to remove material and add that hole so that I could accommodate the hole and the bolt. And look here, I'm trying to mount this and look what's in the way. That big giant nut, which is holding, of course, you know, the bottom wheel. So that is not gonna work unless I remove material from the back of this blue thing. But I'm picking up the Bontac kit and I'm noticing that their bracket is a lot slimmer and yeah, it doesn't line up either, but if I remove a little bit of material from the back of that Bontac bracket, that could fit. Okay, here I'm showing off. This is, uh, f first of all, Bontech was fantastic. They, they sent over the, the file that I needed for the BL touch mount, uh, and there's no adjustability. They've got it all figured out as the right height based on the Mosquito Magnum. And what they sent me, and they sent me some documentation, I was like, wait a minute, your picture doesn't match what the file looks like. And they, they were great. They wrote right back and said, no, here you go. Here's the right one. So I printed these on uh, one of my work Ultimaker S5s out of ABS because printers are in an enclosure. It's going to be a warm environment. You want something rugged. And there, the hot end is finally sorted out. This is uh, where the ribbon cable was. So I'm using a bunch of, uh, let me unzoom here a little bit here, the uh, Goo Gone gel. And uh, I just been applying a bunch of it, letting it sit there. And then every couple minutes coming back with the scraper and getting some of that off of there. So at least I won't have that gooey adhesive sitting there. We'll see how well that cleans up. We're back and <laughs> well, so the upgrade, I'm gonna edit this to fit the full video, but <clears throat> Essentially, the electronics that were inside this thing have been causing nothing but grief with the firmware I've been working with a friend uh, to try to make. Uh, the touch screen uh, that came with this printer is a jittery mess. Uh, the MKS uh, Robin Nano board, uh, this thing is, is not a whole lot of fun to work with. Uh, the other thing, <laughs> I mean, so the screen was the first thing uh, that was giving me issues. When I was trying to start prints with this thing, I just can't get the baby step in to go down. And we, we don't know why. There's something up. When we click on anything on here, this touchpad is just way sensitive. It's an older one. So we're just tired of messing with it. So we're gonna try to go with, well, we're looking at it two ways, newer and better. So if we're gonna upgrade and spend the money on the hot end as I did, redo all the wiring, which I've largely done, I've kept a few things, um, it's time to go under the hood and replace those electronics. And here's what, the, uh, here's what it looks like right now. It's all gutted out. So, so this is where the, uh, uh, this, where the board used to be. And of course the, uh, uh, the screen uh, used to sit up over here and uh, you know, has all these little studs here where it screws in. Now, <clears throat> here's where it gets even more fun. Let me change the camera again. So this is what this old screen looks like, and this is what the new screen looks like. So obviously we have a knob, so we're gonna have to drill a hole in the printer to accommodate that, uh, plus the reset switch. So yay, more fun. But when you look at the back of this thing, I mean, it was fairly flat and you know a lot of room to work with, I guess, if I needed to. The back of this thing is jammed full of all kinds of features. I've got the, you know, the SD card and I've got the USB on this side. 
this machine is largely going to be fed data through Octoprint through the USB port. So, uh, you know, I'm not going to need these ports, or at least I'm not going to need access to them. The other thing is that, uh, if, I don't know how well it shows up here, uh, but the whole pattern is, is slightly different. Uh, the, this guy here is a little bit bigger. So what I'm going to wind up having to do, because why would anything get easy here? So obviously, I can't put an adapter here because, as you saw with the, the new board, there, there is no place where an adapter could sit. Every inch of this board is occupied with a port or has a piece of electronics on there. So no piece of adapter can lay on that. So, so that's out. So I'm going to have to use a uh, cutting wheel on the Dremel and pop these guys out. Now, I don't know how this machine was made on the front. There are little divots. So I'm hoping that when I cut these, they don't fall out. <laughs> so we'll see. If everything goes smoothly, it's a matter of cutting these guys out. And then using the schematic drawing, I have a Showing exactly, you know, this, this is the corners here. This is where the holes are. So, you know, I'll punch and then very slightly drill holes to the outside. And the screws would come in from the front to hold that guy in. And I have standoffs if I, if I wind up needing them to. If, if it's too close, I have some nylon standoffs. And uh, we, we can uh, accommodate there. Uh, the next fun thing is we have to get the SKR board uh, to fit in here. I believe that's going to work. Uh, do I have the SKR board handy here? I have a damaged board sitting here. And let's see if those holes line up. Well, how about that? Something went right. Oh, I got a screw that popped out of here. Let's get those out. And get that one out too. Okay, and it looks like something may have gone right on this build. And it looks like even the holes for uh, the USB port is going to be okay. No, well, maybe not. Yeah. So it looks like the holes kind of line up. I might have to widen that, but again, so that's one more thing I've got to <laughs> I got to work on is trying to figure out if this is going to fit perfectly or not. It looks like the holes line up. My looks like my problem largely is uh, well, you know, that USB looks like it's going to be okay. Depends on how I hold this one-handed. Um, again, it's a little bit of a drag here because, uh, you know, this is what I use to flash. <laughs> so, uh, with that being largely unavailable, that's, that's not great. Well, again, we have a little gap here. I'll have to loosely bolt that together and see exactly what my clearances are. <laughs> Always reminds me of the airplane movie. Clearance, clearance. Uh, but anyway, so, uh, some work may have to be done here. So, these are the tasks I have. The other fun thing, I didn't mean to change cameras yet. Um, when I was removing the cables uh, from the original board, they, again, this was a printer that was made very cheaply, and, and it certainly shows on some of the things they did. Um, I have several of these connectors uh, that are barely in there. So, uh, I have a couple of these I have, I'm going to have to redo. Uh, and it looks like what they used uh, for the bed wires, I just got to find it in here. Uh, they had twisted these guys and it looks like they soldered them. And, you know, they, I don't know how much excess room I have here, but uh, I'm going to wind up uh, snipping these um, and uh, putting fur all connectors on there. I, I just, I don't want that to crack and cause issues. Or essentially just, I want to do it right. So that's where I'm at. So this is part of where my problems lie. Uh, the board, the SKR, I'll show it better from this side here, uh, sticks out a bit here, right here. And so when I've got the, the holes all lined up, um, it, <laughs> it needs to go into the hole for these bottom holes uh, to attach to, to mount to. So once I can get this guy, you know, inside there, there's a hope where this will all work, but I'm going to have to uh, do some more MacGyvering and cutting. So <clears throat> it's been loud down here, uh, cutting holes and getting things to work. Let me get the other camera going here. Um, let's go with the uh, stream cam. And uh, so this is going to be, I just cleaned it off with some goo gun because I was using the 
us cheating, I was using the white magic marker for uh, marking off the holes. And uh, so I made this hole a little oversized uh, to give myself a little bit of wiggle room here. Uh, I had to account for the reset button here and the selector and that all fits. And as you can see, uh, we have holes that are roughly lining up and I'm going to use some spacers in there. Um, this way it's, uh, obviously we, we, we don't want the board making contact with the metal here. Um, so I got a bunch of those, uh, and on the uh, side of the printer, as I, I think I recorded earlier, <laughs> this is ugly, but, uh, uh let me, uh, relocate here. So this is not going to win me any awards at uh, Arts and Crafts. <laughs> I, I still got to clean that up a little bit. It's uh, the board will fit. I just got to get in there and and clean that up a little. Well, I don't have to. It, it would it would definitely look nicer. I mean, no one's going to come over here and audit me. But uh, at least all the sharp edges are gone. And uh, yeah, working with uh, the steel here, <laughs> a lot of sparks, a lot of debris. Um, a lot of safety equipment. Uh, I used uh, gloves, masks, everything else. Uh, I got all the crap vacuumed out here. Surprisingly, Molly's been hanging out, so there we go. But, let me get back to the right camera here. Uh, so there's part of it. I can, at least at this point, start getting the electronics installed in here, and then it's the long task of getting everything wired in. But I think I think, right. Uh, I believe at this point I have everything I need as far as holes and openings widened and cut. I gotta remove all the blue tape. I uh, covered up the power supply. I didn't want any of the grindings from the metal going in there. So yeah, so safety first when you do this kind of stuff and back to work. Future Paul again. So here I am. Uh, this is the board as it is now, and there's really no changes since I sealed everything up and, and got the printer running. Now, on the very far right, you're going to see the two uh, rectangular ports. Those are EXP1 and 2. Uh, those are now plugged into the TFT screen because while I can get away with only using the RS232 port uh, to use the touchscreen, if I want to use Marlin mode, which the screen supports, I need to have EXP1 and 2 connected. Uh, as you can see, there's a huge cutout on the side there for the USB port and SD card port. That's fine. I did have to extend the wires to the bed. Uh, that was a little bit of a hassle, but got it done. And uh, as you can see up there, the drivers are 2209. So it's an upgrade from 2208 we had before. And that's it. Everything is pretty much configured and set to go. And the one thing is uh, I can't put the lid on the bottom anymore because the LCD screen is thicker and it hangs down below. And that's fine. It, it sits in an enclosure and has even more airflow now. A lot of challenges. And one of them was the extruder was grinding. Now, right now I have it doing uh, the E-step, so it's slowly melting some plastic through here. Uh, problem was the wiring. Uh, had to do a little research and find out which wires went where and finally got it right. And so now it's no longer grinding and jumping around. It's <laughs> moving that plastic through. And uh, you can see the little mark I have here in black. It's hard to see, I think, but uh, that is slowly moving through and that will tell me uh, what my E-step should be. So progress continues. I have done all sorts of calibration prints just to make sure I have the flow settings just the way I like them, the wall settings. Uh, this was a test print that was a, uh, almost perfect. And then we uh, dialed in the retraction with a 0 0.8 nozzle, found that 0 0.8 retraction distance was perfectly fine. And overnight, we had to do a test print. And as usual, I love the cat print because the cat has all these overhangs and also in, the, in my safety enclosure, I leave myself a nice mental note. I know exactly what is in here for a nozzle because with so many printers, it's hard to keep track of what has what. Um, but yeah, this looks great. This came out really, really good. I used a 0 0.25 layer height and uh, yeah, this is great. So I'll do a few more calibration tweaks of this thing just to make sure my profile is perfect. And then I can start loading this thing up with big prints for my various projects. 
Okay, the firmware side of this thing, which was huge. So when I first started this project, I reached out to a few of my friends, but it was the holiday season, everybody was busy, and I had seen on Reddit where some people had mentioned that, well, there's actually some very sharp people on Fiverr that are really good at this. And this gentleman here on screen, I mean, he has all five-star reviews. I contacted him and I let him know. I said, look, I have a 2.0 version of Marlin. I'd like to have it be updated to the latest version. Here's, here's the situation. He gave me a quote. I paid him the money. And boom, we had the latest version uh, of Marlin. And then, as I mentioned, we experienced some issues with that board and the LCD screen, which was identical to the other issues that I had before. So I made the decision, look, let's just, I'm going to replace the board with an SKR 1.4 Turbo. I'm going to do a brand new screen. What do you think of that? He's, yeah, that's great. So now we're writing for modern stuff. Anyway, long story short, uh, he's been fantastic. I've We've gone back and forth. There's been a few things along the way that we were stumped on. Uh, one of the things that we had an issue with was with the optical sensor. Uh, the X-axis was not homing all the time. It was really weird, but he found it. So if you're looking for someone to uh, write or help you with firmware, I'm sure there's a lot of people out there, but this gentleman on screen, I don't know if there's a way I can refer him outside of putting his link in the description down below, but he was fantastic. He helped this project. I mean, he, I just can't say enough nice things about him. We, we did it. That's it for this time. So what do you think of videos like this? I mean, myself, I love taking these junky old printers gutting them, putting new stuff in there, um, configuring them and turning them into really excellent beasts uh, that can print as well as, as the modern ones. So I would be really, really curious to know in the comment section what your take is on videos like this. I had a tremendous amount of footage from six cameras and I tried to condense that down to uh, a very short video <laughs> uh, that was interesting yet showed all the uh, important details. So do let me know, I appreciate your feedback. Um, also, if you're curious what I'm up to, do check out my social media links. I'm on Facebook, Instagram, and of course, Twitter, the website I'm currently working on. So that is coming soon. Uh, another big thank you to Bontech. Bontech was the one that offered me the LGX and the Slice Mosquito hot end and accessories uh, for a great discount. It wasn't free, but I got a nice good discount for that. Uh, they make really great stuff. And this tails into what I want to tell you now about the affiliates. Now, down below in the description, there's a bunch of affiliate links. And I know you see that on all the videos, but I just want to let you know that for me as a small channel, the commissions I earn from those affiliate links uh, directly goes back into the videos that I'm producing uh, because, as you know, uh, all the hardware and such like that is expensive. So that helps defray the cost and keeps it fun. So do check out those affiliate links because they help me and they'll save you some money. That's it for this time. Please remember to print safe. Take care.